Time now for last call. Fox Sports hosting this weekend's U.S. Open. And while golf is best left to the pros, it's always been popular with both foreign and American dignitaries. Here's a look at some of their greatest hits and misses on the green. It's the only place you can drive on the green, right? Your own golf course. <laughs> That's all for us tonight. Be sure to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Justice with Judge Janine is next. And remember, I'm Waters, and this is my world. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Janine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. And thank you once again for making justice number one last weekend. Kellyanne Conway, Congressman Ron DeSantis, Anthony Scaramucci, and Tommy Lahren are among my guests tonight. But first, a very important opening statement. I'm a believer. I believe in the system and I believe in justice. I dedicated more than 30 years to the criminal justice system and the assignment of blame. Tonight, I'm not angry. I'm just dumbfounded, disheartened, and disappointed. Over the long-awaited, often delayed Inspector General's report on the actions of the Department of Justice and the FBI in the handling of the Clinton email investigation. The report's conclusion, 568 pages later, FBI Director James Comey was insubordinate. There were a few mistakes and a few errors in judgment. And although there was some bias, there was no evidence of bias in the handling of the email investigation. This report mimics Comey's conclusion in the email case itself. Both the inspector general and Comey make out a provable case and then conclude there is no case. Nothing changes. The deep state hard at work. I don't know about you, but I am so tired of lessons learned. They say Comey deviated from the rules. Deviated from the rules? Comey and his FBI cabal fixed a case. Hillary not indicted for her crimes, yet an effort to frame Donald Trump for no crime. And no bias in the conclusion? Because no one said, yes, I was biased, or simply said, I'm not biased. That's it? Every day in this country, murder cases are tried where there is no admission of guilt and only denials. And yet jurors decide the accused's intentions based on what they say, what they do, and what they don't do. Determining someone's intent is not that difficult. Intent can be determined like this. Take a look at these texts. We'll stop him from being president. It's like an insurance policy in the unlikely event you die before you're, when you're 40. Hillary should win 100 million to zero. America will get what the public deserves. And let's add a new one, folks, from an FBI lawyer. Viva la resistance. Gee, isn't that Obama and Hillary's mantra? You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand those statements. They not only indicate a biased, hateful state of mind, they imply unequivocally a willingness to take official action to impact the election. How do you pledge resistance against a president while you're investigating him? And the inspector general says there's no evidence of improper considerations impacting the investigation? Folks, Comey didn't just deviate from well-established practices. He didn't even do an investigation. He covered for it by having the same people handle both the Hillary case and the Trump frame-up. 
Folks, it doesn't happen this way. This case is not about mistakes or errors in judgment. It's about a deep state trying to drag a crook across the presidential finish line and trying to destroy the man Americans wanted in the Oval Office. Example. Jim Comey said he had to step into Loretta Lynch's role because she wouldn't recuse herself after secretly meeting with Bill Clinton on the tarmac. That's baloney. He didn't just step into her shoes to prevent an injustice. He stepped into her role to declare Hillary not guilty. And Jim, if you're such a champion of truth and justice, why did you go along with Lynch calling a year-long criminal investigation a matter? Why did you say Hillary was extremely careless so as not to use the words grossly negligent, which would make her actions criminal? And when brought before Congress, Jim, you punt and say, you don't think grossly negligent applies. First year law students across this country laughed at you. And you take a case from normal field office agents to investigate with no grand jury, no search warrant, no subpoenas. And you give away immunities like candy with no requirement that those immunized testify against anyone. Investigators across the country laughed at you. And when you found Hillary's deleted emails that were marked C for classified, you decide to believe her when she said it was only a reference to the letter C in the alphabet, in spite of the fact that there was no A or B before C. People in the intelligence community laughed at you, Jim. And when you wrote an exoneration of Hillary months before you interviewed her and 16 main witnesses saying it's done all the time, Attorneys across the country laughed at you. Come on, Jim. You acquitted her because like Hillary, you, Lynch, and even Obama commuted gov communicated government information via private emails. And you placed as many Trump haters as you could, like your friend Mueller in charge of the make-believe Trump collusion on the case. I want to know from this inspector general's report, why don't we know what judge signed the FISA warrant? Who renewed the FISA warrant and what actions they're taking now, now that they know they were conned by a corrupt FBI agent? And why was Peter Strzok, arguably the most corrupt FBI agent in American political history, put on the Mueller team to destroy Donald Trump and with his girlfriend, Lisa Page? Why is he still working and why am I paying his salary? Why is Rod, Rod, Rod Rosenstein allowed to refuse to provide reports and documents to Congress? And why is he allowed to threaten to subpoena records of those in Congress without any criminal investigation? Why Rosenstein didn't hand over the most incriminating of all the texts? He won't win president. Don't worry, we'll stop him. A clear and unequivocal attempt to obstruct a presidential campaign. Why are the DOJ and the FBI allowed to lie to a federal judge and say we have no emails between us on the Loretta Lynch Bill Clinton tarmac meeting? Why can Loretta Lynch lie and use a personal email, a fake name for government business? Tell me how many times does someone have to lie to an inspector general before they're just not believable? Why does Hillary Clinton just days after Bill meets the attorney general on that tarmac say, She'll keep Loretta Lynch on as AG if she wins as president. We're not stupid. And why does the IG not recommend a leak prosecution when there are 65 phone calls from a reporter to a top FBI official? Why did Christopher Wray have to be brought to the White House to be convinced that McCabe needs to go? Isn't the FBI supposed to figure that stuff out on its own? I'm worried. I'm really worried. This report is nothing more than a whitewash of the deep state by the deep state itself. There are great people in the FBI, men and women, and I have had the honor of working with them. But they're embarrassed because they know how bad Comey and company destroyed America's confidence in that esteemed FBI. And there are great people in government, many of whom you've seen on this show. Congressman Ron DeSantis, Jim Jordan, Mark Meadows, Devin Nunes, Lee Zeldin, Matt Gates, Andy Biggs, Senators Lindsey Graham, Ron Johnson, Chuck Grassley. These people are fighting the deep state. 
as obstructionist Democrats like Pelosi, Schumer, and Schiff stare into the cameras and turn truth on its head. They're not real Democrats. They're demon rats. That's what I said, demon rats. And until the Republicans learn to fight like they do and go with a narrative that no one veers from, they and socialism will run amok in this country. We need people in Washington who believe in truth and justice and are not offended by the term law and order and believe in consequences. This is not a banana republic. This is the United States of America with a justice system that needs to be protected. And it's time for those people who are not interested in supporting President Trump to get out of his way. And that means you, Jeff Sessions, it's time for you to put on your big boy pants and start acting like the AG. And if you can't get on board with this president, then get the hell out of his way. And let me be clear to all you critics, I'm not looking for that job. I'm an ordinary American who was brought up to believe in truth and justice. And like thousands and hundreds of thousands of men and women in law enforcement, we're just damn embarrassed and hang our heads in shame with the likes of Comey and his cabal, as well as the impotent Inspector General's report, which is nothing more than proof the deep state is alive and well in Washington, D.C. That's my open. Tell me what you think on my Facebook, Twitter, Facebook page, Twitter, and Instagram, hashtag Judge Janine. Now, joining me now to react to my opening and all of the developments of this week, counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway. All right, Kellyanne, good evening. I am, uh, I am very disturbed by the inspector general's report. What's your take on it? Everyone should be disturbed. And I'm very disappointed that so many people just want to react rather than report. Really dig through all 550 plus pages, Janine, because there's so much to unpack here. Mm -hmm. And people really should not just cherry pick the results of this report depending on their political point of view or conclusions that are in search of evidence. They really should be very disturbed in unison that we have people at the top echelon in the FBI, not the rank and file, good, right. decent men and women who do their job well every day, at the tippy top of the FBI, really trying to tip, well, trying to tip the scales. <laughs> By the way, they lack such political instincts. They didn't see the Donald Trump revolution coming. They, of course, do what Hillary Clinton did a month or so later, which is insult his followers, uh, to call into question their intelligence, their mental fitness, mm -hmm. whom they are. And these are cultural elites in the deep state under our nose. People laugh sometimes and, and flick it away when folks talk about the deep state. It's right there. Read the inspector general's report. Now, this should, not, this should be the beginning, not the end, perhaps, of this conversation. Folks can, can ask the, I think they can ask Mr. Horowitz for more information. Congress, if they're interested in all learning more, they can certainly continue to pursue this. And perhaps they should in the interest of transparency and accountability. And Janine, let me make very clear. Folks, don't kid yourselves. We would know zero. We would know none of this if Hillary Clinton had been elected oh. and not Donald Trump. You wouldn't know what was going on at the tippy top echelon of the FBI. And, and who the heck was giving Jim Comey a hero's welcome two short months ago for this silly book about leadership and morality and loyalty. of all things? Yeah. I don't need a lecture from Jim Comey about loyalty, morality, leadership. It's embarrassing that people killed the fatted calf and rolled out the red carpet for his book tour when yet again we see him putting himself before the process, a grandstanding, showboating, but more importantly, subverting the process. He was insubordinate, and, and he went outside of uh, Loretta Lynch, the attorney general's uh, d responsibilities, I think, to, to right. just act on his own. Well, and, and people should be very concerned about all of that. Let, let me ask you this. You know, for me, and you're so right, I mean, I've read a lot of these 568 pages. I don't know how much it weighs. But the bottom line, Kellyanne, is that they didn't make a criminal referral. They said five FBI agents should be referred for disciplinary action. Everybody is still working. No one is forced to be fired. There is no criminal referral, as they did with McCabe. How, well, how do you think the, Ameri the American people are going to react to this. Well, I hope they'll react because I, I, but only if this is given a little bit more oxygen. That's my initial point that there's not a ton of coverage on this IG report 
in the mainstream media right now, a little bit here and there. They check the box on it. But we deserve a deeper dive. Janine, you can't, with a straight face, credibly say that we've spent over, well, actually two years. Next month will be two years since the Russian investigation started. Right, right. It's just the Mueller investigation is a year old. Okay, for two years, they've been investigating something against this president that doesn't exist. And yet, people, people think that we should go on, spend all this money, go on indefinitely about that. We're here. You actually have some information that that should, I, I think, animate Americans to want to hear more, but it's being ignored largely. Let me ask you this. Ignored, Talk about um, something. By those, and I think some in the media are very uncomfortable that people in the media were accepting, excuse me, giving it get, you know, tickets to games and meals to yeah. FBI agencies. That's very un uncomfortable. Well, uncomfortable. People have gone to jail for that. Politicians have gone to jail to for that That's kind right. of thing. That's and right. this is the FBI. But I want to ask you about the, um, uh, uh, the Donald Trump tweeting, the president tweeting today, that Democrats can fix their forced family breakup at the border by working with Republicans. Uh, I think we've got that tweet, yeah, on the screen uh, for a change. This is why we need more Republicans elected in November. Democrats are good at three things, high taxes, high crime, and obstruction. What Now, there's going to be a meeting, Kellyanne, on Capitol Hill on Tuesday regarding the, uh, the whole image, uh, the uh, issue of immigration. What do you think is going to happen? Well, the president, as he's wont to do, is trying to bring everybody together to come up with a, some common sense plan, but he could not be more clear about what his vision on immigration is. He wants to he wants to have a sovereign nation that has physical borders. Uh, he wants to build the wall, obviously, but he also wants catch and release to end. He wants a merit-based immigration system. He wants more ICE agents. You know, the Democrat, I think what the president is trying to say there is that these Democrats refuse to provide the funding necessary so that you can expand the detention centers, that you have more ICE agents, uh, some common sense measures. And they've been and they've been standing in the way. And by the way, Donald Trump got here a year and a half ago. The immigration issue, right. including at the border, has gone on for a very long time. And the, the two presidents before him tried to deal, deal with it also, Operation Streamline under President George W. Bush. Uh, so President why Obama does President Trump take the blame for what other presidents did? Why is it so different? Why are these concentration camps for kids when they separate a parent from a child? That's, well, a, that's a horrible, that is, a, that is really a horrible um, description. And it's insulting. Um, I've talked to some people over this weekend. It's insulting to people who have had families in concentration camps who then perished. Uh, but but I, wa I want to put that very charged rhetoric aside and make the very clear point that this president had, you know, he brought he brought Democrats to the White House. They held forth for an hour. But all the Democrats wanted to talk about was DACA. They just wanted to talk about the Dreamers. They never raised this with him. OK. All right. Kellyanne Conway, thanks so much for being but with us. But he'll be there to try to get to get a good policy in place. We need to fix immigration. It's a complex set of problems and it will it will require a comp complex set of solutions. Well, but hopefully this it'll is a great done. test, Janine. All do right. the Democrats want to fix it or do they want an issue in this in the fall? They want an issue in the fall. Thank you. And uh, all right, Kellyanne, thanks so much. And here with more on the continuing fallout from the IG report, Congressman Ron DeSantis, a member of the House Judiciary Committee. All right, Congressman, you know, uh, I understand that there are five FBI agents who are being referred for disciplinary action. That seems to be the toughest thing that came out out of this 568 page, I think it's about five inches, six inches high report. What say you? Well, well, I think th that's what kind of the conundrum here is the report has damning facts and evidence, and they did a good job doing that. They were not really willing to draw the obvious conclusions on some of this stuff. Guys like Peter Strzok should be prosecuted. I mean, look, let's look at this, this text message on August 8th, Janine, that we didn't have access to before this, where Lisa Page is going to Peter Strzok, said, Trump really can't be president. Can he, can he? And Strzok says, no, no, he can't. We'll stop we'll him. We'll stop it. And <laughs> they did not. And that was, that was a week after that same Peter Strzok, who's saying he's going to stop Donald Trump from being president, opens a full-blown counterintelligence investigation against Trump's campaign based off an offhand comment at a bar. They never produced that text message to Congress. Somebody deleted it. The OIG and the report says that, that, that they were able that we're to get just it hearing about, Hold on. The message that we're just hearing about was deleted? I think it was either withheld from production or the IG says they think it may have been deleted. 
bottom line is all the other text messages from that day were produced. So there was some human agency, I think, that had to be involved to not produce that because all those text messages were initially produced in 2017. Well, what was happening in 2017? You had all the hoopla about the collusion investigation. Had this text message landed before Mueller was appointed and people see the guy who's running the whole thing uh, said we're going to use it to stop Trump? That would have totally taken the balloon out. So I some whether it was struck, whether it was Page, whether it was somebody else, we need to know who did that. To How me, that was a major out. obstruction no, no, of justice. Ron, Congressman, listen, I'm so fed up with this because you guys have been doing this with all due respect, and I gave you credit in my open. You know I think you guys do a great thing. My viewers are fed up. They want to know why is there a different system of justice for the ordinary American than for them? They can destroy evidence. They can tamper with evidence. They can conceal evidence. They can change the rules. They get away with it. An ordinary American. Well, look at look at Manafort. Not that I give a darn about Manafort, but this guy's in jail right now, and people have violated the law, and and they're just they were they're getting a check from us. Well, Judge, you're looking at the person who, who wrote the original criminal referral to Sessions where I had 15 members of Congress join me to refer all these people, Comey, McCabe, Strzok, Page, we've already referred them to the Justice Department. The OIG was not willing to do that. We did it in Congress. Sessions has not gotten back to us. Uh, so a lot of us are on the case. And I think this, this damning text message, the fact that it was not produced, to me, that's obstruction. Whether it was Page, Strzok, somebody else in the Bureau, we need to get that answer. Yeah, We're having Horowitz come testify. Congressman. We're going to ask him about that. OK, you're going to ask him about that. Let's assume that we find out that that they actually you know were obstructing there's no one in the justice department to prosecute there's no special second special counsel and i gotta go so what we, you and i can talk to we're blue in the face if there's no one at the justice department doing anything what difference does it make to quote a very famous woman look the, the justice department has let us down on this there we should have okay. had a second special counsel long ago all right Congressman Ron DeSantis, thanks so much for being with us. Next, more on the IG report as the Mooch comes to justice. Anthony Scaramucci joined me live in a moment to talk about the report and more as justice rolls on. Developing tonight, the fallout continues from what we, what we now know from the IG report, high-level anti-Trump bias in the FBI. Joining me now, former White House communications director for a few days, Anthony Scaramucci. Good evening. They call it a mooch. It, it was so short. Janine, it's a you can't mooch and not a scaramucci. I got yeah, it. I got it. <laughs> all right, Anthony, are you at all surprised by the IG report, which actually doesn't recommend any criminal charge, any further investigation? It just said, you know, there are a few errors in judgment when there are so many fundamental flaws that all went in the favor of Hillary Clinton. And I'm not going to ask you to repeat the report, but where do we go from here? Well, the, the, the problem is that I'm sure that the president is probably disappointed with this report because it's not 100 percent accurate. They've sanitized and glossed over a lot of the things that actually happened. And so you're getting the teeny top tip of the iceberg, Judge. Uh, and what's down deep below that is a real manifestation of corruption against the Trump or, uh, campaign, uh, the candidate Trump, and then eventually when he was president. And so I think that uh, Director Comey, I just find the sanctimony of his book now. I had read the book uh, in preparation for some interviews, and I went back to it uh, tonight to look through the levels of sanctimony. So he knew this report was coming out. He knew his friends in the FBI would protect him and sanitize this report. Um, and I got to tell you something. The president, once again, is correct. He talked about uh, people eavesdropping on him. They talked about informants or spies, whatever you want to talk about. He made the right judgment in firing James Comey, uh, despite the firefight. Uh, that ensued thereafter. And so for me, I'm disappointed in the report, but I'm not surprised, Judge, okay. because these people protect All right. each other. You're not surprised you're disappointed in the report. Everybody feels the same way. Where do we go from here? What do we have to do to change things so the people are accountable? Well, I mean, I think this is what the president is absolutely best at. And so I think once he steps back and digests all the information, my guess is he's going to appoint people uh, that he trusts, uh, that are on both sides of the aisle for that matter, and they're going to come up with a protocol to protect these agencies from these sinister rogue type people. And so my guess is 
uh, by the end of the year or certainly maybe after the election, uh, the president will probably have a protocol or a suggested protocol to use on a going forward basis to protect Republicans and Democrats. And so what you know, uh, being a judge, uh, that we're all subservient to the rule of law in our country. Uh, the president knows that better than anybody. And so it's going to be incumbent upon him. And I believe it will be one of his legacies, Judge, uh, that he returns the luster and the glory to these organizations that they deserve. Well, he can't do it. Uh, 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 Anthony, he cannot do it. With Jim, uh, with, with uh, Jeff Sessions and Rod Rosenstein running the place. Well, I know, and I, if I, the Dems win the House, you know as well as I do what they plan to do. And so we can't wait I, until after the election. No, no, I, I, I understand all that. But I, I do think that even if, and by the way, I predict that we're going to keep the House. But even if we don't keep the House and they move for the nonsense towards impeachment, uh, the president's poll numbers will likely get stronger. I mean, the, the American people are now on to the political intrigue and the political sh shenanigans and the politics of personal destruction that take place in Washington. Yeah, and I think they believe the president and take him at his word that there was absolutely no collusion inside the campaign. Well, yeah, first all of all, he's all there's really no... trying to do is go ahead, Anthony. No, I said all he's really trying to do is improve the American economy, improve the quality of life for all Americans. Uh, and how about wages, Judge? For the first time yeah. in 12 years, you're Everything. seeing sustainable wages for middle and lower middle class families. And so the guy's doing a great job despite all, all of these right. headwinds and obstacles. Well, let's let's just hope that the American people see it and his poll numbers are great. So everything in that regard is good. Anthony Scaramucci, thanks for being with us. And Charlie Kirk is still on deck tonight. And next, the panel is ready for action. Tommy Lahren and Chris Hahn ready to talk immigration and more. You don't want to miss this one next. Live from America's news headquarters, I'm Robert Gray. Heightened security at the World Cup after a taxi plows into a crowd in Moscow. The vehicle jumped a sidewalk near Red Square, injuring at least eight people, including two from Mexico. The crash is believed to have been an accident. Russian police have detained the driver. Chaos in a Venezuelan nightclub. 17 people were killed when a tear gas canister caused a stampede for the exits. Hundreds of people were packed into the Los Cotorros Club for a graduation celebration when a brawl broke out. Witnesses say the tear gas was lost from inside a bathroom. Eight people are in custody, including two teens believed to be responsible for setting off the tear gas. I'm Robert Gray. Now back to Justice with Judge Janine. Welcome back to Justice. President Trump is heading to Capitol Hill this week to talk immigration with the GOP. Here to talk about that and more political commentator, Tommy Lahren and former Ed Chuck Schumer radio show host, Chris Hahn. All right, guys, um, the, the, the issue now of children being separated from their parents at the border is one that for some reason is getting tremendous uh, traction and, and anyone who's a parent has to feel uh, a lot of emotion about it. And, and even as a judge, when I was sentencing a parent to jail and the child would be in the courtroom, it's tough stuff. But uh, Chris, aren't parents ultimately responsible for their own actions in this regard? Well, yes, but we have parents who are presenting themselves at the border for asylum and international law says we should treat them with dignity and respect. And this is a policy that was initiated by the Trump administration. There's no legislative fix needed here. In fact, the, the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of Texas, Patrick Ryan, just said today that this is a, a policy that, that Jeff Sessions and Donald Trump initiated themselves. So I think we've got to find there's a very big difference, though, between people criminally crossing the border and presenting themselves at the border for asylum. So, so are you suggesting, Chris, that, that right everybody now. The president is, can do it Chris, right now. Chris, are you, suggesting, are you suggesting that they're all asking for asylum? And, Tommy, is there a difference between the president's policy and the law? Well, the president has said well, he has they, a zero they, they, tolerance they, policy Tommy, for illegal Chris. immigration. Excuse me. This president has said he has a zero tolerance policy for illegal immigration. And yes, as Americans, we feel for anybody that's crossing the border because we know this is the greatest nation on the face of the earth. However, this is a nation of laws. And so I say to those parents and to those children, if you do not want to be separated, do not cross the border illegally. Follow our laws. Follow the process. That's the best way to ensure that your family stays together. 
Go ahead, Chris. So as I just suggested to you, Tommy, so as I just suggested, when you are presenting yourself at the border for asylum, you are not crossing the border illegally. You are following a procedure. And it is at that point that this administration has decided to take those, those parents and separate them from the children. That not only violates international law, it violates Matthew 25. And anybody who believes in that should be ashamed of this policy. Chris, are you trying to tell me that every single person that's going to the border that's separated from their families, they're all seeking asylum? None of those are illegal immigrants that are trying to come into this country and then live within the shadows and take people advantage of our American asylum. system? Okay, Chris, Chris, the question all is very simple. All of these simple. people are speaking asylum, really. Chris, our, uh, you know as well as I and Tommy know, not all of them are seeking asylum. Come on, let's not kid each other. Now, for those who come across illegally, but these are people wait, let me finish the question. For those who are coming across illegally and not seeking asylum, some of whom have already been deported, who are bringing children, the law is the same as it was when Barack Obama was president and Bush was president. So the president has not changed anything. In fact, this president offered the Democrats the opportunity to keep the, uh, no. uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, DACA kids here, 1.8 million of them, and the Dems wouldn't go with it. You're just trying to make the president no, look bad. No, this is the president. The, no, the president is treating you know, people I who say are something sneaking well, under Chris. a fence Hang the on, same Tommy. as people who are coming to a door, Tommy. They, they are, they're treating them the same, and that is not right. I want to ask you a question, Chris. This is very important because I know that you and many on your side of the aisle talk a lot about compassion, and I agree with you. We need to show compassion as a Christian. I believe in that as well. But where is the compassion for American citizens? Where is the compassion for legal immigrants living in this country that expect the rule of law to be followed and expect border security and border enforcement? Where is the compassion for those individuals? Does that not exist? Because President Trump is going to make sure it exists. Tommy. That's why we elected him. Tommy. Tommy, that that you do unto the least of them, you do unto Christ. Oh, Chris. And we know what's happening at the Chris, border right now. Chris, we're talking about the it law is an abomination. right now. It is an abomination. What's an abomination? Every it, time it, a judge sentences a parent to jail, is that an abomination? Is that an abomination? They make these, a choice. Uh, well, since when are people not responsible for their own actions and their own behavior? When do you bring people, children across a border they illegally? They are presenting... Oh, don't give me this 100%. You know it, I know it's not 100%, Chris. They are not criminals. They are not doing really? anything illegal. Really? Are they breaking they the law coming here? They are themselves for Chris, asylum. Chris, are they breaking the law coming here? Go no, ahead, they're Tommy. not. If you Let Tommy talk now. <laughs> Chris, you can shout as many Bible verses as you want. I, I believe in the Bible as well. I believe in what you're saying about compassion. But the thing is this, you can't have a nation without a border. We need to make sure the borders are secure. I know you're going to keep telling me that all of these individuals right. that are crossing the border are seeking asylum, but we know that that is not true. We've got 11 to 20 million illegal immigrants living well, in this country, okay. and those individuals are not seeking asylum. So, we have a problem at the border. This president has a zero tolerance policy for it. So the Democrats want to come to the table. That's fine. But here okay. on out, this president has made so it very let me ask clear. You this, Don't Tommy. come to this country Tommy, me, and let complain let me, about Tommy, the rule of law. Let me ask you a question. Let me let me ask you a question since you've asked me a few. Is it right when people are seeking asylum for them to be separated from their kids? Should the president stop that from happening right now? I believe, first and foremost, we need to make sure we have a secure border. And, of course, we need to deal with these individuals. We need oh, to make sure we question. have a streamlined process. That also starts with a wall. That starts with well, border enforcement. We can seeker? figure out who's what coming over here and why seeker? they're Should coming they over here. Given... Right now, we don't know. Oh. You know, guys, we don't what this know who's coming into our country, and that's asylum, a problem, when they Chris. Show up, when, they show up at a, when they show Tommy, up at an official crossing Chris, and ask for asylum, Chris, should they you get know treated what? differently? Chris, you're like a broken record. We all know it's not all about asylum. Tommy Lair and Chris Hahn, thanks it so much for truth. being with us. Street justice still to come. Plus, what an honor for Alec Baldwin. He makes the list of the most outrageous things I heard this week. And Charlie Kirk is here to break it down next. The 2020 election will be here before we know it. Take a listen to who thinks he'd be a great president. <laughs> if I ran, I would win. You would? I, I would absolutely win. Then why I, don't I, you 1, run? 1,000%. Then where are you? Where do you want to have everything? If I ran for president, I would win. Hands down, I would win. Because you would, would be not... the funniest, most exciting, when are you most gonna, crazy campaign. The... So you would never There's say... so many things this country needs to do that are so obvious. 
And that's just one of the most outrageous things I heard this week. Here to break it all down with me, Turning Point USA founder, executive director, Charlie Kirk. All right, Charlie, what's your take on that sound from Alec Baldwin? Well, look, you got to remember, you know, he's uh, he's been a quote unquote comedian for a couple years now uh, during the Trump resistance. I don't find him too funny anymore. It's like comedy's completely lost all their substance. But look, you have to remember, he couldn't even keep a job at MSNBC because he got fired for an anti LGBT oh, slur. That's right. You can't even keep a job as a late night host there. You're somehow supposed to win the Democrat primary and then the presidential cycle. <laughs> he has a horrible temper. He can't keep any anything for more than a couple months. And this kind of illustrates a broader point is that comedy is dead. The left has killed comedy in America. Interesting. Uh, it, it's almost as if what they, what they say when they're serious has become comedy. And when, what they say when they're trying to make a joke isn't very funny at all. Because I found him trying to say that he's going to win to be quite comedic. But I don't think he meant it as a joke. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's get to Chelsea Handler's tweet. She's always good for outrageous. Uh, hey, syphilis brain. It's nice you have such sympathy for high-level criminals, yet not for kids being ripped from their parents by the thousands now. This is your policy. The Trump policy, not the Democrats. Everything you say is a lie. Your skin color is even a lie. Your hair. That's Chelsea. What do you say to her? That, that was so funny, I forgot to laugh. Um, so look, here, here's what's so interesting about Chelsea Handler. She's another one of these quote unquote comedians that has descended into this political hatred of this president. But let's talk about the immigration issue right mm -hmm. here. Go They're ahead. selectively talking about these deportation centers um, where allegedly these kids are being held immorally. Now look, you have to remember a lot of the images that were spread on the internet of these were during the Obama administration. Yeah. Where was Chelsea That's Handler right. calling out President Obama back in 2014. Was she down there picketing and protesting? Hey, Nancy Pelosi, were you there visiting with the rest of your Democrat colleagues when all of these images were actually mm -hmm. taken? Mm -hmm. Of course not. They're using selective outrage on a very particular issue that they want to try to drum up outrage and hatred to support of this president. You know why? Because he's succeeding across the board. He's the most successful president of our lifetime. He's bringing peace to the world. Yeah. The economy is roaring. So they have to mm -hmm. pick some micro issue that, by the way, President Obama ignored himself. Yes, indeed. All right. And finally, Senator Schumer, uh, uh, he took to the Senate floor and he said, uh, uh, sound here. All right. By granting a meeting with Chairman Kim, President Trump has granted a brutal and repressive dictatorship the, the international legitimacy it has long craved. For the United States, it's permanent proof that we have legitimized a brutal dictator who has starved his own people. Charlie, we have a very short time. What's your take on good old Senator so, Trump? I'd like him to say those same words when Obama met with the, the Castro brothers in, in, in Cuba. Really quick on this, President Trump is bringing peace to the world and some of the Democrats have found something wrong with it. They would rather see yep. conflict and war than Trump get credit for peace. Well, there's no question about it. Charlie Kirk, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thanks, Judge. All right. You're the best. Thank you. And last week it was a taxi cab. So how did, how did I get around for this week's street justice? You're going to enjoy this one. I jumped in a taxi cab last week, so this week for Street Justice, I decided to hail a different type of transportation. And the topic? A curious decision on the Miss America pageant. So here I am in Manhattan trying to find out what New Yorkers think of their taking the swimsuit competition out of Miss America. Me and my pedicab driver, Kenny, are hitting the streets. All right, so Kenny, let's hit it, Kenny. Hey, how do you feel about the fact they took the swimsuit competition out of Miss America? I think it's ridiculous, you know, it's, uh, that's what it's all about. Uh, it is for you. Definitely. <laughs> and you watch it if they're not in their bathing suits? I don't really watch it anyways, but I mean, it's a beauty contest, so I mean. I think it's part of the tradition of it. Yeah. They just want to change everything. So. Yeah. So it's not good. I don't think it's good they're changing it, no. Look at my body. You think I care about those? I would never wear those swimsuits. Okay. Um, I think the girls do like it, though. Uh, yeah, they, I think a lot of they do. Want, they got to flaunt it, right? Well, <laughs> I feel like I'm in Ben-Hur. This is my chariot. You don't have those spiked wheels, do you? Well, it's a loss, but... Who's at a loss for? For the men. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. 
They took the swimsuit competition out of Miss America. How do you feel about that? I think it's disgraceful. That was the whole point of watching it. <laughs> I think they were beautiful, and I think they should be seen. I think that's great. Why? Are you going to watch it? I'll still watch it because it's more, it gives them more intellectual, it gives, it gives these women, it, it kind of shows these women if they have more brains than body. Yeah. That's okay. What would a male say? A male said that's too bad that they took that out, but a female would say that's awesome. I think it's, our brain. I think it's too bad. <laughs> so will you watch? Probably not. Okay, you think the numbers are going down? Nope. I think the women will be more in tune. But what do you think they should substitute for the swimsuit? Uh, dance contest. <laughs> with the women or with men? What do you think of that? Uh, you know, I guess it's a sign of the times. What do you think of that? Uh, what, uh, my wife is looking at you. <laughs> oh, I'm disgusted. It's, it's just, it's just not right, is it? What do you uh, think? I want to be looking at the pretty ladies in swimsuits. Why do you think they did it? It's political correctness gone mad. So, Kenny, I'll ask you. What do you think of the fact that they took out the swimsuit competition from the Miss America? I have to admit that when I did watch it, you know, I, I did kind of wait for the swimsuit competition to check it out. So. The truth ultimately comes out. Admit it, Kenny. Yes, I do. I admit it. <laughs> I love the swimsuit competition. <laughs> Put it back in. We'll be right back.